Okay. I did. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Hello. (laughs) Welcome back to The The Drunken Drunken Library. Library. Today we learned that I am, in fact, okay at finding the button. (laughs) Hey. Um, (laughs) So, you know. Practice makes perfect, everybody. That's that's true. Um, (laughs) So this is going to be a video about our TBR jar this year, slash our... Book Riot, Riot Read Harder, Harder Challenge, Challenge, because if you saw our 2018 goals video, you'll know that those two are the same thing. Yay! Um, our TBR jar was too much pressure last time. Right. Also, even for the prompts, we, like, both wanted to read the same thing, and I feel like that ended up being a little bit more of a hassle than it should have been, because, like, we don't always feel like reading the same thing, so we're well, just not going to do it that way this And time. also, like, even if it's like, oh, yeah, I do want to read that, it's like, when it comes up, it's like, I don't want to read that right now. Right, because it wasn't that we chose anything that, like, well, we did choose one thing that neither of us really wanted to read, but we posted a video about that one. <laughs> yeah. Got through it real quick, because it was awful. It was the worst. I was very entertained by how awful it was. It was the worst. Sam was I just hated it. I hated it so much. <laughs> Uh, but I was, I was really entertaining the video about it because I got very animated. Yes. Yes. We'll link it. We'll link it. Um. It's pretty great. It's a great video. But this. The book is awful. This time around we decided to revive the TBR draw because who wouldn't? It's so pretty. Amber made it so beautiful. Um. It was at one point an olive jar, so. And olives are tasty. Yeah, they're stuffed with delicious things like garlic and jalapeno. Yeah. The ones that we buy. Yep. They're delicious. Yes, they are. Sometimes cheese. Mmm. Um. So good. I think this one was a feta one, because that was the first one we tried of those. That's right. Yeah. And then... Fond memories. We went from taste bud tasty to brain tasty. Mm-hmm. And that's how the TBR jar That's how the TBR jar, jar was, was born. born. Um, but yeah, so we brought back the TBR jar, but this year we're going to be doing it as a way to motivate us to get through the Book Riot Read Harder Challenge, so we're going to put all 24 prompts in In the the jar, jar. and then we are going to choose two prompts a month. The first couple months, because we didn't do it in January, we're going to choose an extra one, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or we can always do an extra one for like March and April instead, because February already started, but we'll figure it out. Either way, there's going to be two months that we'll draw three prompts because we didn't choose any for January. And then we're each going to choose whatever we want to read for those prompts Yep. for our TBR jar. And we're going to try to get through them by the end of that month. Right. And so it could sometimes be the same book as each other. It could yep. sometimes be different ones. It doesn't matter. It's just a, ma- a way of doing the TBR jar and getting us through the challenge because we both didn't finish last year. Amber got way closer than me. <laughs> I had one that mm-hmm. I didn't do. One. But uh, so this is a way to get us to do it, and it's also just, like, kind of a giving you, like, a TBR, but giving you wiggle room still, because yeah. we just don't respond well to pressure, we've learned. Yeah. And it's really dumb, because we always put it on ourselves, ourselves, and then we end up just, like, not responding well to it, and then just, like, not doing anything. And that's insane. Right. We just need to, like, find a better way. Yeah. So this is what we're doing this year. Because <laughs> we really enjoy, like, when we get into a good TDL rhythm, we really enjoy it. But, like... Once that rhythm kind of, like, starts to starts to get messed crumble, up, it's like... It's, it's, it's really rough. And, mm-hmm. like, you know, we're adjusting to new schedules. We're adjusting to new plans. Like life situations like so it's just it's been so we're trying to get we're trying to get back on the horse as it were and like we think this is going to be a good way to kind of do that yep and it's also going to hold us accountable for remembering to do wrap-ups every month so because that's when we're going to draw from the jar Mm -hmm. um because giving it its own video seems kind of silly Mm -hmm. (laughs) every month but, um, yeah. so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go in this video through the prompts, tell you what they are, yeah. and if we have any tentative plans for them, we can mention them just quickly. Mm-hmm. Not too much detail. We don't need to talk forever. If we eventually read them, we're going to do a video either about the prompt or about the specific book every month if we read the same book. Yeah. So, yep, we can do that. Yep. Um, all right. So I guess prompt number one is going to be a book that was published posthumously. Yep. Posthumously. Whatever. Whatever. Um, so I 
had some ideas for that, but I've never settled on anything. So I think I might go with the one that Amber is reading because she's been working on it already. Yeah. Um, so you were going to do it. I am reading Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. I'm actually sort of buddy reading it with Stephanie over at Time to Read. Um, we're, we're about as good at buddy reading as you and I are at TDL. Yeah. That <laughs> happens. Slash YouTube. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I, like, have wanted to read that one for a while anyway because it's Jane Austen's, like, satire parody of, like, the gothic genre and Wuthering Heights yeah. fits in that genre and it's my favorite classic. Yeah. And so I just want to, like, read somebody kind of mocking it a little bit. It's funny because, like, <laughs> you, it's like when you're reading, like, as I've been reading it, I'm just like, oh, she's mocking this so Like, she's hard. making fun of it so yeah. bad. And I enjoy both of those genres like I love like parody <laughs> yeah. stuff and I love like that genre. so I just like wanna I want to read it it's, it's good I am enjoying it so far I'm like five six chapters in like I feel like that's gonna be one that I'm gonna be like oh fuck yeah and you're yeah. gonna be like it was interesting <laughs> I don't I'm, I'm really enjoying it it's mm -hmm. just a, like I just keep not making time to sit down like there's been a lot of well and it's a classic on. so like you have to be in the right mindset to yeah. do it and but I think that's what I'm going to do, too, just because, like, I just said, you know, let's mock, you know, the Brontes. Let's do that. I love Wuthering Heights, but, like, I get it. It leaves itself open to being mocked. I totally get it. <laughs> it, like, it's, it's ridiculous, but. It's not recalling Wuthering Heights specifically. No, but, but it's that it's genre. Kind of, yeah. It's that genre, and thus, and like, that's yeah. where my brain goes. It's, it's, I don't want to. It just it's yeah it's really good i'm really mm -hmm. enjoying it i just really need to sit down and yeah i just keep trying to read it on like breaks at work and then i'm like oh i just need to sit down and read this for a couple hours but then i get home and i'm super tired so then I just play some yeah. stupid game on my phone and fall asleep yeah it happens so prompt two is prompt two is a book of true crime all right so my plan for this is to read um the helter skelter which is the true story of the manson murders by. It's like Vincent Bugliosi, I think. That's a name. It's quite a name. I'm, I know the last name is pretty I can't remember if the first name is right, but it's a story of Charles Manson killing people, doing what he do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, because I like am really into <laughs> hearing and reading and stuff about serial killers. I'm not that crazy. It's just, well. like, I am crazy. I said not that oh, crazy. Okay. It's not from like a malicious place. I just find the psychology of it fascinating. Yeah, no, I I'm I'm there too. Like I find serial killers fascinating as well. Um, and we're from like Dahmer Town, so yeah, there is that. <laughs> and speaking of which, that's sort of what I want to read. Um, there is a graphic novel called My Friend Dahmer, which is written. The author name is Durf Backdurf. Oh, Durf. <laughs> Which I'm sure isn't a pen name at all. Nah, it's, it's totally his real name. Yeah. And he never got made fun of. No. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, he wrote and drew a graphic novel, which would fit another prompt later in here as well. Mention. But since it is about Jeffrey Dahmer, it would fit the true crime one, even though it kind of focuses more on uh, his non-serial killer killer. It counts, because it all is what leads to it, so... Yeah, so it's all, like, part of the psychology of it, and... Yeah. yeah. and he did grow up, like, what, less than a mile? Like, what, like, ten blocks down the street? Something like that. The apartment with all of the murdering was, like, less than ten blocks from here. Yeah. <laughs> from where we live currently. Yeah. Our house that we're sitting in right now. Yeah. Um... <laughs> it's torn down now, but... Yeah, but it was there. Yeah. Okay, his victim. Snow started. Oh. Um... <laughs> yeah, like, one of his... One of his victims went to my high school, which is also right down the street. Uh -huh. um, it, there's, like, it, it's it's Milwaukee. It's... It's Yeah. Town. Um, but yeah, so prompt number three is a classic of genre fiction. So mystery, sci-fi, fantasy, mm -hmm. romance, whatever. Do you have any plans for that one? I had been thinking the for Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring haven't read it yet, and I really like the movie, okay? <laughs> Sam hates them. <laughs> um, I do want to read that this year. 
Yeah. But no, do what you gotta do. I, I, I could end up, oh, wait, no. Did I write, oh, yeah, no, I did. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm just like, what are my notes here? Whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm open to other possibilities. I'm gonna read that book this year sometime. Yeah. But I might do something else for the prompt if it comes up sooner. Understandable. Or if, like, whatever you end up with. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <sighs> yeah. yeah. So I was gonna read, um, uh, I've Always Lived in the Castle, Shirley Jackson. So good. I also thought about using Never Ending Story for this because I still haven't finished it. Either that or I think that one counted for another one in here, too. Oh, it sure did. Mm -hmm. I was going to use that one for another one in here. Uh, It might not even be the one you're thinking of. (laughs) Oh. It fits, like, three prompts in here. Oh, shit. But, uh, no, I was going to use the the Shirley Jackson one because I've wanted to read it for a while anyway, and I have the audiobook, and, yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, next one. Um, Prompt Four, a comic written and illustrated by the same person. Yeah, I was going to do my next book in the Scott Pilgrim series, which is going to be Scott Pilgrim vs. the Universe by Brian Lee O'Malley. He wrote it and illustrated it. You know. <laughs> I could do that, because uh-huh. I think I have to read the second one. Yeah. Um, but also, that Dahmer the one. Dahmer graphic novel is written and illustrated by the same person. So that's also an option for so that. that's also an option for that. And doubling up on these is totally okay according to Book Riot's rules. Yes. So. <laughs> it's doubling up one book each here and However there, you want to do whatever. it. Last year the color purple fit like six prompts. Oh, so. yeah. yeah it did. <laughs> um, next one on here is a book set in or about one of the five BRICS countries, which I had never heard of before this. Yeah, I didn't know that. But it's the- Brazil, Russia, India, China, or South Africa. Right, and, like, why are they grouped together? I mean, I'm going to look it's... it up. I keep meaning to. I just haven't yet, so... I'm going to feel real dumb if it's obvious. Yeah, I'll tell but... you when I look it up. I'll, like, screenshot it and be like, this is what the shit is. But did you have a plan for that one? I have a couple ideas, mm-hmm. but I haven't settled on anything. Yeah. I've... Like, yeah. Yeah. I've got, um... Well, and, like, the... Like, I'm... I... I might do that um, Born a Crime one, Yeah, that's the one I'm going to do, Trevor Noah's book, Born a Crime, because it's about his childhood in South Africa. Yeah, and so, like, for me, that would be a celebrity memoir, but it would also be about South Africa. I've considered also, um, I have a collection of Russian short stories that I got out of a little lending library, mm-hmm. and... Yeah, I've, I have another one I could probably use for this, too, that I'm planning on using for something else here, but I've got okay. a lot of ideas, so... Yeah, I've also considered a Doctor Who. And I've been, meaning to read, I've been meaning to read that Trevor Noah one anyway, so oh. that's that. So the next one? The next one is a book about nature. I'm probably going to read either Pat the Great Cat or my book that I bought about bats, because I love bats. I love bats. Also jaguars. <laughs> so either one of those is a win for me. I have several nature-related books. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple that I've read, a couple that I haven't. I was probably going to go with probably one of those. technically count like wild for that, but I think you read that last, that was last year. year. Mm-hmm. That one, oh, I guess it is about nature. It's about a person in Journeying nature. Journeying in nature, but yeah. uh, you read it last year, so it doesn't matter. Last, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I have I have a lot of a lot of nature, not a lot, but I have a chunk, a of considerable nature number books, of nature yeah. books. Um, but yeah, so you haven't like settled on one. I haven't settled on one yet. Obviously. It'll be, Whatever. So. All right. Book or prompt seven is a western. So that's a thing. Any ideas for that one? Yeah, I was gonna go to half price books and just find one that sounded interesting. Probably one of the ones you sold. <laughs> no. Buy one of your cowboy romances, Amber. Uh, no, they weren't I. Mine. Someone gave them to me, and I was like, I don't they want were this. They yours when they gave them to you. <laughs> No. I don't want this. I am going to uh, read All the Pretty Horses by Cormac McCarthy. Because I really want to like Cormac McCarthy. (laughs) It hasn't gone well for me so far. We'll see how it goes. (laughs) Prompt 8. Prompt 8. A comic written or illustrated by a person of color. Well... (laughs) As it turns out, my favorite comic that I read last year, which was volume one of Descender, um, is illustrated. All the art is done by a Vietnamese-American man named Dustin Nguyen. And uh, so I'm going to read volume two. It's the best. It's the best comic. (laughs) 
Um, I'm real aggressive about it. And because she's very aggressive about it, I'm gonna read volume one. She doesn't want to have another Flowers for Algernon situation on her hands. <laughs> she was on my ass about that for, for like, like a two year and years. a half, yeah. probably more. It's so good. But this one, it's it's sci-fi, but it's super emotional. There's like a little kid robot with his little dog robot, and it's so cute, and it's the best, and you should all read it. <laughs> um, yeah. So, number nine, a book of colonial or post-colonial literature. I have no plan. I, yeah, I do not have a plan. There's a lot, though. There's yeah, there's plenty of stuff. There. There's plenty of stuff. I just haven't chosen anything yeah, yet. Same. Um, so next one. Ten. A romance novel by or about a person of color. Haven't chosen one for that yet either. I have an idea for you. I thought about the one that I think you're thinking of. <laughs> I did think about that. Is it the Chantal Madison one? Because I definitely thought about that. Because I figured I would plan one of the read one of the other ones by her. Yeah, because I thought about like some of her other ones because she's got all those like werewolves, and then I yeah. was gonna do that for the the other prompt on here, the YA one. Oh yeah. But oh, then shit. I was just like, oh no, I can do that because I had another plan for that one mm. anyway, and I was like, I could read one of hers, but then I couldn't tell which one was gonna be romance. I was like, I could read that one. <laughs> it's real short. It's real fast. <laughs> I'll probably do that. It's, it's not called good. Taming the Vikings Dragon by Chantel Madison. Chantel Madison is a delightful she human being. She's so nice. But we that was her. not good. Our battery is doing a thing, so we should speed this shit along. Okay. But um, yeah, so that was that happened. Yep. Eleven. Um, what am I even... That's your turn. Is it? No, it's my turn. I'm going crazy. <laughs> Children's classic published before 1980. Um, um, I was thinking Chronicles of Narnia. I was going to use Never Ending Story. Ah, oh, right on. Yeah. <laughs> um, no it was published in 1979. Close enough. Or it was in the 70s, and then it was not translated until after 1980, but it was still Close published enough. before 1980, so it still counts. Right on. Um, uh, so number 12 is A Celebrity Memoir. I already read Nick Carter's uh, memoir, which is called Facing the Music and Living to Talk About It. I had a lot of thoughts. I put them in our wrap-up, so... I'd been thinking John Barrowman's second autobiography or one of Carrie Fisher's uh, memoirs. Oh, Carrie Fisher's Wishful Drinking is really good. You'd really like it. I think I, I, I bought um, The Princess Diarist mm -hmm. on one of my ebook apps. Yeah, but so. she's, she's hilarious and she's the best. Yeah. Um, all right, next one Oprah Book Club selection. I was thinking The Help. Um, also, White Oleander? Yeah, I think is... I'm going to reread White Oleander just because I haven't read it in, like, several years. And uh, also, I'm not necessarily always about Oprah's book club selections, but I know I like that one, so... Uh... I've been wanting to read The Help for, you know, reasons. I know, I know. <laughs> um, even though, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. But, yeah. Anyway. Um, where is it? Uh, 14, A Book of Social Science. Oh, I finished this one, too, actually. Oh, yeah. I finished four of these, and I didn't even know. Um, so the I did, um, the words are escaping me. You Can't Touch My Hair and Other Things I Still Have to mm. Explain by Phoebe Robinson. It's really good. It made me think a lot. It's awesome. You guys should read it if you get a chance. Also, she's hilarious, so there is that. Nice. I was thinking of finally reading my Kat Von D book that I bought in 2009. <laughs> All right, next one on here. A one-sitting book. A one-sitting book. Um, I don't have anything written down. I've got a lot, so. They exist yeah. about the world. I read um, Talking As Fast As I Can from Gilmore Girls to Gilmore Girls and Everything in Between by Lauren Graham. I'm, like, into the celebrity nonfiction this year. Come at me. I, yep. <laughs> I, was, I was, yeah. <laughs> yep. But that one's really good, so. I listened to the audiobook for part of it, and then I had to drive home from work, and I continued listening. And then when I got home, because I have the physical book, because Amber bought it for me, I read the rest of it. It's really good. Um, the first book in a new-to-you YA or middle grade series. I read um, Who Could That Be at This Hour by Lemony Snicket. It's the first book in his All the Wrong Questions series, which is a prequel to the series of Unfortunate Events. I was thinking the... Um, 
Golden Compass, the first in his Dark Materials trilogy. I support your choice. So, mm. yeah. um, A sci-fi novel with a female protagonist by a female author. I was thinking something by Octavia Butler or Ursula K. Le Guin. Mm -hmm. haven't decided. I am going to either read one of the many things by Margaret Atwood I have that I haven't read yet, or I was going to read Yargo by Jacqueline Suzanne, mm -hmm. because I love her other books, and this one's a sci-fi, and it was the first book she wrote, but it was the last one of hers that was published, and it was actually published posthumously, oh. so I could technically use it for both. Yeah. But, either way. <laughs> So, recommendations for that, for me, yeah. would be appreciated. But it's, like, my favorite genre and one of my favorite authors who normally writes in a different genre, so I just kind of want to give her a shot. <laughs> Legit. Um, a comic that isn't published by Marvel, DC, or Image. Plan for this is to read the second volume in the Lady Killer series, um, okay. which is really good. It's by is... Joelle Jones, I believe. My plan is to read the first volume of the Lady Killer series. It's about a 1960s housewife who is also an assassin for hire. So, and it's the art and the writing and everything is done by a team of women. It's pretty great. Right on. The first one was like, you could tell they didn't really know where they were taking it yet. So I'm interested okay. to see where it goes. Right on. Yeah. I love how you read like all the comic ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so the next one is a book of genre fiction in translation. Um, no idea. Not a clue. I was planning on reading We by Evgeny Zamyatin, because um. it was originally published in Russian, and because Megan loves it, and we're both super into dystopian, so... And you're the same person. We're the same person. Um, and she said it made her question what her favorite book was, because it's always been 1984, but this is, like, the book that inspired 1984. Mm. Oh, shit. So... I want to read that. Um, a book with a cover you hate. I don't know about this one. Probably like some sort of shitty romance novel. Oh shit, I could use Lord of the Rings for this one because it's a movie oh, cover. Oh yeah, you've got the movie covers. Yeah. Um, Alright, so next one. A 21. mystery by a person of color or an LGBTQ author. I don't have a plan for this one yet. I don't either. I don't read a lot of mysteries, so I'll look into it. Although I think a couple of those books that I picked up at that when I went to the Irish thing with Kyle, and then they had all those free books there. Mm -hmm. Some of those are mysteries. Yeah. So, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll yeah. see what happens. Um, twenty-two, an essay anthology. I could count. Uh, you can't touch my hair for that one because it was okay. an essay collection. I don't know if I'm going to or if I'm going to read, um, the one that I didn't read last year, The Secret Lives of Geek Girls, mm. or. Uh, I have another one that's, like, it's called Slut, I think, and it's a, a collection of essays by women about, like, stereotypes as women. So I've got some options. I was thinking of um, this book called, uh, I don't remember what it's called, For the Love of Books or something. It's a book. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a book. It's essays, essays about books. But yeah, you've had it. it for a while, yeah. so. Um, all right, the next one on here, it's number 23, is a book with a female protagonist over the age of 60. My sister-in-law highly recommends that I read one of the Miss Marple books. By the Miss Marple Christie. books are really good. I love so. Agatha Christie, though, so there yeah. is that. I haven't decided yet. Maybe I'll do one of those. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Right on. Maybe I'll read The Notebook because she's over the age of 60 when she dies. <laughs> right. We'll see how I'm feeling. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, our camera died. Our camera died, so... We weren't quite fast enough. Nope. Um... We talk a lot. Yeah, we you do. all know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, we switched to the phone. Um, but so we're going to redo prompt 24, 24, which is an assigned book you hated or never finished. All right, so I'm saying I have two options for this. Okay. One of which I never finished, both of which I hated. <laughs> oh, okay. So the first one is the one that I never finished, and that's Black Boy by Richard Wright. Mm. I just hate his writing style. I feel like he spent a lot of time in that book blaming a lot of his life's problems on race, which obviously race causes a lot of problems, but a lot of the problems specifically that he addressed were more related to his relations with his own family. Mm. And it was just like the way a 17-year-old me read it. It just was like not jiving with me. And also the second half of the book just kind of turned into this like somewhat non-linear communist rant <laughs> and it just like didn't really fit with the first half and so I didn't finish it it was real weird 
So I'm going to give it another chance because I've also coming at it now with a different perspective, with more awareness of like race relations stuff and might read it. So I might get it and feel differently about it because like I haven't lived that experience. So obviously I don't really know everything, but like reading it just like I didn't get much out of it at the time. Mm -hmm. But my other option is As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner, which is the worst. It's the worst it's the worst, and I hate it. <laughs> um, I hate it. I would rather read Lord of the Rings than read that book. It's the worst. I hate it. Damn. <laughs> um, you guys, she must really hate that book. She hates Lord of the Rings. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the premise of As I Lay Dying. Is that the one that I bought? I don't know. I'm but curious But it now. is basically that this woman dies. Okay. And then her family transports her across the country in the back of their vehicle to go bury her somewhere. And there's a rotting corpse in the back of their vehicle this whole time. And her daughter's pregnant and her son's an idiot. And her other son talks about fish way too much. There's an entire chapter in that book. It's chapter 19. And the entire chapter oh. is my mother is a fish. It's the worst. It's the worst. <laughs> Incidentally, my husband really enjoyed that book. He's an idiot. <laughs> I love him, but that book was the worst. <laughs> so I might reread that because I guarantee you, you would get a really entertaining video about it. <laughs> Maybe I'll read both to stretch my horizons. Because the one would be a really entertaining video and the other one I just feel like maybe I'll get something different out of it now as an adult and that mm -hmm. could legitimately benefit me. Right. And obviously I would like to grow as a person. I am. Um, in in my years of, of varying levels of education, there are many books I never finished reading. Because <laughs> I am not, I have not historically been a good student. Um, I'm too impulsive and I procrastinate too much. But... The one that I remember the most distinctly is never finishing The Scarlet Letter. Hmm. I never got past the first page. I was just like, what? What? Nope. See, I love The Scarlet Letter. <laughs> I think I could enjoy it now. Mm -hmm. I think I could understand it now. But at the time, I was just like, how did I end up in this AP class? I don't know. I don't want to read <laughs> what this. What are these things that I'm reading? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's... Well, that's just, I was like a little goody two shoes nerdy pants in my English classes. So like the fact that there's even one that I didn't finish is honestly kind of astonishing to me. Yeah, I'm kind of shocked actually. Yeah, so we'll have, um, did we show the jar in the video? We did. We, we did. did. We can show it again just to right. be certain. Here's so, our beautiful TBR jar. It says jar. to be read. Yumber collaged it. It's very pretty. It has some Dr. Seuss books on it. Yes, it does. It's returning after... A long hiatus. Yes, it is. <laughs> and it's new slash improved. Yes. So. The jar, there was really nothing wrong with it before. It was the content. It was the content slash us trying to deal with the content. Yep. So, yeah. So that's yeah. what we're we're doing so what with we're that working with this year. This is our TBR for Book Riot Read Harder. Any recommendations for any of the prompts, even if we're already solidly committed to it, thoughts and comments and whatnot and are always appreciated. Some, let us know if you're doing this challenge or if you might want to join in on this challenge because mm -hmm. it's never too late to join. Yeah. And apparently if you send them your like a picture of your list with all the completed things completed, ones. you get like a discount in their store. So <sighs> that's cool. Finish it this year. Hell yeah. But yeah, so let us know. Thoughts, comments, concerns, yeah. recommendations, anecdotes, buddy read requests, knock knock jokes, <laughs> anything you want. <laughs> knock knock jokes. I told you, I used to do that in my team meetings at Captel. It was always just like, anybody have any <laughs> comments, questions, concerns, anecdotes, knock knock jokes? <laughs> I might have been there for those. I don't you probably remember. Were. You were on my team for like three and a half seconds. Yeah. So <laughs> that was fine. It's fine. But yeah, that's our, our shit. Uh, have a great day. <laughs> Bye. Bye.